Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another ServiceNow Express video form blog post on the topic of UI policies. So UI policies are used on forms and items when we fill out the data to dynamically, based off of conditions, make certain other fields appear or disappear. We can make them become read only or have them be mandatory when other conditions again are met. So how this looks in action, here's a quick example of on incident we're going to have a UI policy when priority goes to high, make our assigned to field mandatory, it'll make our short description read only, and it'll hide our location field. So we'll see that these UI policies, they run before we even submit the form. So where business rules only run after it's been submitted or updated, UI policies actually run client side, meaning that they'll occur the moment the action is taken. So let's see how we can set these up both in the form record views here as well as in the self-service catalog on our catalog items. To begin, you open any record on that table of your choice. We right-click the header and then we navigate over to configure UI policies. So UI policies are really based off of two pieces of logic. The first is what conditions you'd like this policy to run and the second is the actions that policy should take. So this rule we've seen earlier of making when it's a P1 the assigned to field mandatory, of setting the specific short description as being read only, and making location disappear was done in the following manner. We start by opening or creating new for our UI policies. And the first thing you pick is the table of the data that UI policy runs on should be auto set when you go through the record so you give it a short description relevant to what you're doing so my p1 toggles I have here as we noted the first condition is when you'd like this p1 toggle UI policy to run so in my case I'm just saying anytime priority is one I'd like this to run the actions I'm then going to take are the following for our assign to value we're gonna make mandatory true for caller ID, we're going to set visible to false. And for short description, we're going to set read only to true. So we can go ahead and create a new additional policy action here if we'd like. So maybe we were going to go ahead and let's set the additional comments field visible false as well. So what we see here is on the left, under this UI policy action, we pick the field we're affecting with this policy and on the right we're affecting its mandatory state its visible state and its read-only state something important to note is that if you select for example false here for this condition the reverse logic will be true so if it's not a priority one item visible will be true and that's an important item to know so I go ahead here I selected visible false and I'm going to go ahead and press submit and we'll see just like that when I navigate back into an incident record here in my instance and I go ahead and select my priority one additional comments has dynamically vanished so this is great for toggle functionality it's great to implement some sort of form level workflow if you will based off of other selections or data entries to go ahead and make other fields mandatory to make other fields read only so they can't be changed and again show or hide themselves. Now this same concept can be applied to the way we handle our self-service catalog and the items found therein. So in many cases based on how you build out your self-service catalog you may want some type of dynamic self-service in that when a user goes in to get help from IT through that self-service portal and they go to create an incident, maybe based off of the category, you'd like to prompt a subcategory or you'd like to prompt an additional information field. So having that dynamic actions is the same concept, but this time, instead of right clicking a record, you're gonna go in and right click from that catalog item that you're in, that form view, and then you're gonna navigate to personalize catalog UI policies. So here, let's say when it's software, we're going to want to go ahead and show additional comments. 
Otherwise, we don't want to see additional comments. So again, I'm going to press New under my Catalog UI Policies. So we can see that this is applying to that catalog item, Create Incident. And we're going to say it's our Software Additional Comments toggle. Same way as with our records in the system, we're going to choose when to apply. So here we'll say anytime our category from this selection is software, then what I'd want to do, the action I'd like to take, will be as following. An additional item you could define on these catalog UI policies is if you'd want them to run on catalog tasks as well, so for them to inherit the policies, apply also to the requested items, so the requests that are created, you can have that apply over as well. But let's just go ahead and save this catalog UI policy here that is affecting my create incident record producer for the software additional comments toggle, where we said anytime the category is software, again, now the action that we're going to want to take is setting this variable field for the comments I'm going to set it again to visible being false. So this is again the same concept you pick from the variables that are defined on that catalog item or record producer and then you pick what you want to change in terms of the mandatory nature, the visibility, or the read-only versus write access. So when I go ahead and so submit this, when we head we back into in this create incident record producer or it could be any, really any catalog item but now the moment a user selects software, we have that dynamic toggle functionality. So this is how you can make it a very immersive experience, enforcing the way the data flows before a user even submits or update the record coming in from the form or catalog view. And again, keep in mind this example can go both ways. So maybe if you're building out a different line of functionality like we commonly see HR and facilities and you want the reverse logic. So having a field pop up when a different field is submitted, we can absolutely do that as well. So here, let's say, well, let's set affected location to pop up and become mandatory when a requested completion time is inserted. So again, we right click, we personalize the catalog policies, but this time we just switch around the logic. So this is going to be our pop-up of location affected. And we're going to say that any time this due date field that we're taking in from our item, any time that due date is basically not empty or it's anything, what we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to then make our location reference selection appear and become mandatory. So I'm going to make the new action as before. I'm going to select that location variable I have. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set visible to true and mandatory to true. So since, as I mentioned earlier, the reverse logic will take place if it's not met, that's what will allow for this pop-up functionality. So you'll see that when I head back into this facility cleaning request item, and I try it, right now our, my completion time is the only variable here. And only after do I put in a completion time is now my affected location field popping up and becoming mandatory. So whichever direction you go in, keep in mind, be cognizant of the fact that the opposite will come into play. But in each case, it makes for very dynamic options for how your data is presented to the user.